Rabbi Kaplan. Okay, we're, we just started a series called Sichas Chol Mishol Tormele and uh, which means that we're going to talk about, uh, we're going to try to talk about a subject, but we're talking about it in a tzura, uh, in the style of Sichas Chum, that means not pre a prepared shir or a prepared maima, but uh, discussing a subject. The subject today is Yeshua Mayor, our producer, asked me to talk about uh, the kid. To say some Kiruv talk, I would call it. Now, this has been going on for 40 years, I think. I still remember Abnach Weinberg when he started off his career with Kiruv. And then there are others and others and others. Nowadays, there's a Irgun Arachim that they do Kiruv. And he dabrut. And he dabrut. Now, I heard and I think I read that uh, the whole Irgun Arachim was, you know who started it? You know? No. Pram Grenema. Everything he keeps a secret, he doesn't let anybody, he doesn't let his name be printed any place. He doesn't make any benesius and anything like that. But he was the first behind it, and he sent Avrachim to do Kiruv with the organization called Arachim. That they come for uh, to have a seminar for a few days. They come to a hotel and they lectures, and that, and then uh, some of them uh, become from. And there, there are great lectures that talk about the subject and they discuss things till late at night. And and then later on, they, and they got money from Reichman in Toronto. He gave a lot of money for Reichman to Rab Chaim Greenman to, to run the thing. But then the others, they brought Rab Shach into it also. And uh, Rab that was all right with him because he, he didn't, he was built to Hashem Levada. What does he care that Rab Shach is involved? But there were probably certain, bring more money. Machlok, it could bring more money also. And and there were certain machlokis in different things how to do certain things. So, uh, for example, I heard that, that there was that when, when you bring a chiloni people to a hotel for Shabbos and you, and you have lectures, so can they sit mixed or can they not sit mixed? Should they should they sit mixed? The Shach says, no, you can't. We can't bring people and have mixed seating. The Reb Chaim Greenman said, no, the Minmal De Chilonim, that's their way of life. So, so you, you can have mixed seating. When they'll become from, they won't have mixed seating. But like, they were not close to and how to run the thing. But they have excellent lecturers, and many, many people became from. And they put out a pamphlet, I think every year they send, they put in all the mailboxes a pamphlet of, uh, to raise money. And they have pictures of this one became from this one. This one, he used to do this, he used to do that, he used to do this and that. And then he went to Rahim and he got turned on and he became from, okay, very good. And he got married and he had children and the rest is history. Now, so what's one lecture that I could give right now with Yeshua and Mary's little Kaylee? What could this add? But we were Mikavo from Rabbeinu that a person ain't darky least Akish Klau. Rabbeinu is? Rabbeinu made Rab Nachman Breslover. That it wasn't his death to be stubborn a person. Yes, you talk about this. It, it could be. Uh, well, I he's could also be. a man. <laughs> yeah, he's also a so, so, I'm going to talk. Now, I want to say like this. But I, so, I was thinking about this subject. I think I, maybe I did have an idea. But to talk about some a new. I don't know if it's new, but I think it's a it's a certain angle of the thing. Now, we've always heard that there's the proofs of God, the proofs of termination, boom, 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 
him. The cat knocked over the ink and he wrote a whole book. We've heard all this. And the Kuzari, of course. What? The Kuzari's proof. The Kuzari's proof of Termina. Termina Shomayim. Because I know uh, Abba Laban, Abba Laban, when I was with And then a person will hear that and they'll say, okay, I'm going to be from, I'm getting up tomorrow morning to Diamond and I'm putting on film, I'm changing my whole kitchen and everything. Yeah, probably were such people. But nowadays, this is not the subject. I think we're dealing with Taiva now. Now, you could say there were always there was always taiva, but I think nowadays it's only taiva. That's all. of course there was always taiva, but nowadays that's all there is. I want to say like this. I'm thinking something, and, and it has to. It's no good to us also. It's not just something to talk to Chilne. I wonder we we we're so from. Are we really from? Let's ask ourselves. I mean, what about our davening? And what about our, the Avera of Bittu Torah? Are we so careful with the Isra of Bittu Torah not to talk in the middle of learning? I mean, I heard that the Rimnitzer, the Rimnitzer Rebbe, he had a chavrus, he sat for his door on six hours straight and learned, and he, he, somebody came to talk in the middle, no, 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 like that, I heard from him. Are we so careful? I mean, so, so what makes us from, because we keep Shabbos and we don't eat chazer, okay, but... Uh, and we don't do other affairs. But, but, but in our Madriga, we're also not. And how's that dominating look? What kind of dominating do we ever? I mean. And you're a person that dominates at the Gra, but there's some people here that dominate later at Imre Sheffer, which is Alachas Kam of a million. So, so we have to talk to ourselves also. We don't just have to talk to them out there. We have to talk to ourselves also. No. I was thinking like this, let a person, a person wants to find out, should he keep Torah or not keep Torah, should he keep mitzvahs or not, go ask your neshama, ask your soul if it's important to be from or not. What do I mean? To from is religious. From means religious. Do you have to be religious or not? Now, the truth, I just remembered, I once heard a lecture from an ate, from Rav Mordechai Gifter, and he said, and they asked him to talk about orthodoxy. What was it? Oh, diversity in orthodoxy. He was going, diversity means shinui, chiluki, deis, hakzana, maybe, in orthodoxy, in frumkeit. So he said, he got very upset. He said, I am not an orthodox Jew. I am a Torah Jew. That's what he said, real strong, he said. And then he went on talking about what Torah is. Now, I don't want to talk about religion. I want to talk about Torah. I want to talk about mitzvahs. But mainly what I want to say is, does a person have to connect to Hashem or not? Let, now, that's the basic question. Torah, Hashem is God. Hashem means God. Does a person and Torah have, is the and, uh, book of the Bible, the five Torah books of the Bible, the, Bible, the, the five Talmud, books. the Mishnah, the laws that were given in the Torah, the laws that were given to study, and that we study them, not only to know what to do, but since this is God's wisdom, we study it in order to know God's wisdom and through that connect to Him, because He told us, this is a way to connect him. The question is, do we, is it important to connect to God? Now, I'm not going into subject, is there God or isn't there God? I'm assuming that everybody believes there's a God. And everybody believes there's such a thing as a spirituality, let's call it. My question is, do you have to connect to that or not? Now, I, I want to say this, a person can ask his soul, do I have to connect to something higher than everyday life or not? Now, do, do you believe that there is such a thing as a soul? You do believe there is such a thing as a soul. It's just, you might not believe in the word soul the way the imagination sees it, that it's some kind of spirit that's inside of a person. 
But you could use other words, and many times you find that people get into an argument and, and, and it's only semantics, it's only like the difference is what name to give this thing, but both agree on the same thing. Now, you don't have to use the word soul, you could use the word personality, you could call it life, you could call it self, you could call it your inner, inner self. Now, you could ask that, do you have to be spiritual? Do you have to connect to something above everyday life? I think the main problem with people, especially now, is that they're busy running, 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 and they don't have time to ask questions. Just start asking questions. That's a he did off or died. That's what Paro said. Let them just work hard and not think. Why are we here in Egypt? What brought us here? What are we doing here? That's what he said. Let them work hard. And I said like this. I heard that I have a brother-in-law. I used to have a brother-in-law that he lives in uh, San Francisco, and he works, I don't know what you call it, I think he invests. And my son was there, my son Yosef was there, and he told me that while he's sitting with his children and watching television, or doing something, he has his computer with him and he's, he's looking up this stack and that stack and what and went up, went down. While he's doing like he doesn't waste a second. Now that's a problem. It's all right, there's nothing wrong with it, but it's a problem. Let a person close himself in a room and stop and think, why am I here, why am I here? Ah, Is there a meaning to life? Maybe, yeah, yeah. Well, we're used to thinking that his bodice means tefillah, praying, asking. But, but, but I think it, it means a few things, that, that's the truth. A Rav Avram Tzvi Kluger from Beit Shemesh said, and he spoke to this means, at least maybe one of the one of the meanings of it is being alone with God. Take take a minute, uh, uh, take take a time, take a half an hour, and, and be alone with Him, just you and God. Now this doesn't have to do with what you believe in. Being alone with meaning, being alone with the with the basic questions that's called. You see, they, when you, you start saying God, so they start saying you're talking about religion. I don't have nothing to do with religion. But you do have to do with the question of why am I here? What am I here? And, and just, just ask that. You don't, you don't have to give an answer to the question. But sit a little bit and think, is there a purpose for me being here or is there not a purpose? Now, I want to add another point. There might be that the purpose is to make a living. A very simple, very oversimplified. Yeah, there's such a thing in America, there's such a thing called oversimplified, which is that in the, in the weak brain of Americans, that's a reason to say that something is wrong, because it's over, it's an oversimplification. Have you heard this expression from a specific now, person? I heard this expression from my father-in-law, which would live the man a big part of his life in California, Palo Alto. And I said to him once, I said, he said, that's an oversimplification. Who now, said that? You said. My father-in-law said, said to, you. to me, that's an oversimplification. Now, does that... We're not talking about what it is. We're talking about is it right or is it wrong. Now, somebody says now is nighttime. It's also an oversimplification. It's very oversimplified because night becomes through the sun setting, and the sun setting, there's a whole plan how it works, and how it becomes dark. And this. So, just to say it's night is an oversimplification. But yet, nobody's going to criticize you for saying now it's night. But that's only we because we're used yeah, to... Yeah, there's seven or eight seconds. 